Today I'm going to be talking about exactly how I set up my gear when throwing the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow from the surf in Southern California. I'm going to be breaking down the rod, the reel, the line, and any terminal tackle when it comes to throwing the Flash Minnow from the surf. If you guys are familiar with my channel, you guys know that the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow 110 is my go-to lure when surf fishing, uh, especially when targeting halibut, white sea bass, as well as all different kinds of species from the surf, barred surf perch, yellowfin croaker. Really, the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow is a deadly, deadly lure from the surf, but it's also really important to set it up with the right rod, reel, and line, and so forth. And if you're brand new to the channel, thanks so much for clicking on this video. I do a lot of surf fishing, trout fishing, tuna fishing, and my goal with my channel is to really help you catch more fish regardless of what type of fishing it is. So we're gonna jump right into it and talk about rod selection, reel selection, terminal tackle, and how all that fits together to optimize your arsenal when you're heading out into the surf. So let's jump straight into rod selection and I wanna break this down into four different categories for choosing your rod for throwing the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow 110. And the first one is gonna be the rod power, the second one is gonna be the line rating, the third is gonna be the lure rating, and the fourth one is gonna be the action. Now it's super important that you pay attention to all four of these categories when selecting your rod and I'm gonna explain more why that's important in a little bit. But the first thing that we're going to talk about is the rod power. Now the rod power is separated into different categories, anywhere from ultra light, light, medium light, medium, heavy, extra heavy, so on and so forth. Now a rod's power, or in other words, backbone, refers to the pulling power of the rod and your ability to pull on that rod without breaking it or tiring yourself out as you fight fish. So when it comes to throwing the Lucky Craft from the surf and probably targeting halibut and other surf species, I recommend a medium to medium heavy power. And there are some exceptions to the rules and it's important to note that these ratings are subjective based on rod companies. So I'll be talking a little bit more about that later. But in general, I do recommend a rod that's about a medium or medium heavy for throwing the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow 110 from the surf. The next two categories that we're gonna be talking about is the line rating and the lure rating. And these two ratings um, go hand in hand with the power of the rod. And I'm gonna be explaining more about that in a second, but it's super, super important because I can't tell you how many messages that I've received in, over the past couple of years for people that I'm trying to help uh, select their rod. And most people know the power of their rod. They can tell me that it's a medium or a medium heavy, but a lot of people don't pay attention to the line rating and the lure rating. The line rating that I recommend for throwing the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow from the surf is anywhere from eight to 15 pounds. You can go lighter if you want, but I don't recommend it. Um, eight pound is even on the lighter side. 15 pound is pretty much as high as I would personally go, but you can go higher, 20, 25 pounds. It's okay, but remember that the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow is a light lure, it's 16.7 grams, so give or take about a half an ounce to cast. And so you really wanna be able to select a rod that's gonna be able to load up and cast that um, flash minnow out there um, without any difficulty. A line rating of about eight to 15 pounds. A lure rating um, anywhere between a quarter to three quarter would be the sweet spot. Whenever you're selecting a rod and you look at those ratings, you wanna, you wanna select a rod that's gonna be right in the middle of those ratings. And so if you're looking for something between eight to 15 pound, you're probably gonna be using more than likely about a 12 pound uh, liter or line for throwing the flash minnow. And the reason why it's so important to look at both of these recommendations connected to the power of the rod is not all rods are created equally. For example, I have the Phoenix M1 inshore rod right here, and this is actually, believe it or not, a medium light, and the line rating is 10 to 25 pounds, and the lure rating is one to three ounces. And so this rod, while it's a medium light, um, the line rating is higher than what I'm recommending um, of the eight to, eight to 15 pound, and, but the lure rating is rated through one to three ounce. You want something that's gonna be a little bit more finesse to be able to load up that, that rod and load up that Lucky Craft and be able to cast it freely and easily into the surf and be able to maximize your casting distance along with some other things which I'm getting to. 
So using that as an example, it's really important to look at the rod power. So medium, medium heavy, but don't just run into the shop and get any medium to medium heavy rod because you can grab a rod that's medium or medium heavy and that line might be rated for you know 10 to 30 pound, 20 to 40 pound. And the lure rating, as you see on the M1, could be one to three ounces when the flash minnow comes in at about half an ounce. So you wanna look at all three of those things when choosing your rod. And then lastly, but definitely not least, is the action of the rod. And I recommend a fast action when it comes to throwing the Lucky Craft from the surf. And the action refers to where on the rod the rod bends. And so a fast action or extra fast action is gonna bend closer to the tip of the rod. And then a moderate to slow action is gonna bend closer to the middle of the rod. I recommend a fast action rod because uh, when throwing something like the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow as a jerk bait, you really want that sensitivity. And so with the bend occurring closer to the tip, it's gonna give you more sensitivity and it's gonna allow you to really feel that lure. And it's important when you're retrieving the Lucky Craft to be in tune with the lure, to feel the vibrations of that lure. And a fast action is really gonna help you do that. And when you do get bit, it, the fast action is gonna allow you to get a quicker hook set because it's gonna help the rod shut off a little bit faster uh, compared to a slower action rod where it's bending and shutting off in the middle of the rod. Shutting off refers to when you're fighting a fish or setting a hook where the sweet spot of that bend occurs and when the rod is no longer bending and you're now pulling and fighting on fighting that fish. Now the other reason why a fast action is recommended for throwing the Lucky Craft Flash Minnow is loading up that lure and being able to get good casting distance. A fast action is really going to allow that lure to load up and, and you're gonna be able to get much better casting distance compared to a moderate action rod where the bend is gonna be in the middle. Um, the lure is too light and it's not gonna load properly if you're using something that bends closer to the middle. So um, a fast action definitely is recommended. And so when it comes to the rod recommendations, the ratings, you can get any rod um, as long as you're within those specifications. So um, you guys know that I love throwing the Phoenix Trifecta Light 903, and that's actually a medium light. I said it in the past that medium light is a little bit of a misnomer and all ratings are subjective. And that medium light is actually has a decent amount of backbone on it. And if you've seen some of my videos, I've brought in some pretty big bat rays, leopard sharks, a 32 inch halibut, some pretty big white sea bass. And so um, the power, in my opinion, is closer to a medium or a medium heavy than a medium light. And so um, that's why I really love the Trifecta Light. It has the feel and the sensitivity and the, and the weight of a finesse rod, but it has the power to get the job done on better grade fish. Um, the 903 is rated, has a lure rating of a quarter to three quarter ounces and a line rating of six to 12 ounces or six to 12 pounds. And it's a medium light with the fast action. You know, I never tell people that they have to get the Trifecta 903, but that would be my personal recommendation. It's what I love using. Some people might, li might like heavier, something with a little bit more power. You know, they, they have a line rating that's a little bit higher um, and they're just using heavier gear. And as I get into the reels here in a second, you really want your reel choice to correspond to your rod choice. I like light because another aspect of throwing jerk baits from the surf is you gotta have a little bit of repetition and you gotta make, be prepared to make a handful of casts. A rod and reel being light is very, very important to me, which is why I'm recommending a rod to you that's on the lighter side uh, when it comes to hunting fish like halibut or white sea bass. Uh, from the surf. Now, when it comes to the length of the rod, that might be the first question that people ask me is how long of a rod should I have? Uh, really, in my opinion, that's not that important. You can choose a seven foot rod all the way up to a 10 foot rod. The Phoenix Trifecta Light is a nine foot rod and you definitely can get a little bit of extra casting distance in my opinion if you have all the ratings matched up correctly. The longer the rod, um, you're gonna get a little bit more distance. However, in my opinion, I don't think it's gonna be that big of a difference. Uh, for example, Example, the Lucky Craft, uh, Lucky Craft has a custom limited edition Lucky Craft rod, which I believe is no longer in production, but that, that rod comes in at uh, shorter than eight foot. I believe it's like seven foot six or seven foot eight. And uh, it's a fantastic rod and it really throws the Lucky Craft really, really well as you might expect. And so anything between seven foot to 10 foot uh, will get the job done. If I were to recommend a length to you, it would be anywhere between the eight to 10 foot range. 
um, I think you'll be feeling pretty good about your rod choice. So to sum up my recommendation for rod selection when it comes to throwing the Lucky Craft, rod power of medium to medium heavy, a line rating anywhere from eight to 15 pounds, give or take, um, a lure rating of a quarter to three quarters and a, and a fast action rod. Um, look at all four of those things when selecting your rod and going into a shop. I highly recommend going into a shop and holding a rod and looking at all four of those things. Please, please, please don't go in and just get something that's 10 foot because it's surf fishing and, uh, and a power that's a medium or medium heavy without looking at the lure rating and the line rating. Chances are the lure and line rating on a medium to medium heavy rod might be much higher than what is optimal for throwing the Lucky Craft. Now let's jump into reel selection. And as I mentioned before, it's really, really important to select your reel based on your rod choice. And you wanna pair those things up so that they balance and they fit each other really well because not all rods are created equally and not all reels are created equally. If you don't like my rod recommendations and you think that it was just much too light for the style of fishing that you wanna do, you can definitely go a little bit heavier, but at the same time, you wanna adjust that with your reel choice as well. You wanna stay consistent um, in your rod and reel selection. I'm gonna be talking about that here just in a second. And, and so the reel that I recommend is anywhere between a 2,500 to a 3,000 size reel. In general, the Daiwa Fuego LT is something that I recommend for people who might just be starting out or just getting into it. It's not the cheapest reel, but it's not the most expensive reel. It is on the cheaper side in the grand scheme of things, but the Daiwa Fuego LT, you could find it for around $100, sometimes 80 to 90 bucks when they're on sale. So it is a very, very budget friendly reel. It's super, super light and it'll match up to the rod recommendation. It does pair really, really well with the Phoenix Trifecta Lite 903. And just to give you guys an example of what I'm talking about when when I say that not all reels are created equally, I just picked up um, a new toy for myself and I'm super, super stoked about it. And this is the Daiwa Surtate. And, the, and I actually picked up the 4000 Daiwa Surtate. This is the LT, it's lightweight, and it's a 4000 size reel. And you might say, Benji, you just spent time recommending a 2500 to 3000 size reel. Why are, why are you now showing us a 4000 size reel as your primary reel? Well, because it's an LT reel, it's super light. And this 4000 Surtate is actually just around eight ounces, which is the same weight as the Daiwa Fuego LT 3000. This is actually the Daiwa Saltist. And this is something that I was throwing for a little bit and then I stopped really quickly because it was so stinking heavy. And this is the Daiwa Saltis 4000. It's a great reel, I love it, but I'm gonna keep it in my toolbox for maybe getting smaller yellowtail, calico bass fishing, things like that. This 4000 size reel comes in at over 16 ounces. And this is a 4000 reel that comes in at eight ounces. So this reel is actually twice the weight of this one and these are both 4,000 class reels. So it just goes to show you that not all reels are cre created equally in size and weight. And so while I recommend a 2,500 to 3,000 size reel, um, be sure to just check what kind of reel it is. You just wanna make decisions based on that framework. So hopefully you see with this, with my rod and reel recommendations, how important it is to match them up together really, really well. Now, when it comes to what kind of line that I like to use, I like to have braid backing. I don't want to constantly have to swap out monofilament, though mono is a great option. The, the one downside to mono, in my opinion, is that it goes bad relatively quickly, so you are going to want to be swapping out fresh spools, but it is cheap, and if you don't mind constantly having to swap out the line to keep it fresh, uh, definitely an absolutely valid option for you to go with, but I like having braid backing on here. My recommendation for line to use is anywhere between 20 to 30 pound braid backing. Uh, 20 pound is gonna cut through the wind better. It's gonna give you a little bit better casting distance. Uh, you're gonna lose obviously a little bit of that abrasion resistance. And while I have fished straight braid uh, a little bit more in the past, I don't do it as much now because I like fishing heavy, heavy structure. And it's important to know that if you are fishing reefs and a area of beach where there's a lot of rocks and such, uh, straight braid while it does give you increased sensitivity for feeling the lure and getting hook sets and it is going to have a little bit better casting for you. One of the weaknesses of braid is that it's like noodle against rock. You're much more likely to saw off 
with straight braid. So that's the reason why I don't fish straight braid quite as much now, but still an absolutely uh, valid option. Nowadays I fish uh, with a fluorocarbon leader. 12 to 15 pound fluorocarbon leader is my recommended length, is my recommended size for leader. So 20 to 30 pound braid and I use a connection knot. I like using the RP knot and I'm not gonna do that tutorial in this video, but if you wanna learn how to tie uh, the RP knot as a connection knot, I'll link a video where I detail that, break that down step by step for you guys in this in this video description. I use the J Fluoro from Daiwa and I really like it. It has a little bit of, uh, it has a little bit of stretch on it, but um, I like it for the abrasion resist resistance and uh, just gets the, gets the job done for me. When it comes to the length of leader, I like doing three arm length pulls. And so when I tie it on, I just do three, one, two, three, and uh, that, that, that's how much leader I use. Um, I just don't want that connection not getting into my spool because a lot of times that causes all kinds of problems inside the spool. So as long as that knot is uh, outside of the spool, um, I'm pretty much good to go. I don't usually have any issues uh, with, the, with the connection getting through the guides. So from rod to reel to line, after that, you're all getting ready to, to fish. Um, you get your line through your guides and you're all ready to tie on the Lucky Craft. What I like to do is I like removing the split rings on the nose of the Lucky Craft. I remove that and I like using uh, tactical angler's clips. And these are 50 pound tactical angler's clip. And I really like these clips because uh, I found that they're really good quality. They don't corrode and I don't even have to wash them after I've never had these clips corrode. I've actually used um, some knockoff clips and they work fine functionally, but after I use them one time, um, even after I rinse them, I find that they're corroding and they get all rusty super, super fast. These clips, unless I lose them, I can use them over and over again. The reason why I really like using the clip for that is it allows me to swap out Lucky Crafts while I'm fishing. I pack really minimalist when I'm surf fishing with the Lucky Craft. I tie the tactical angler's clip with the Palomar knot and, uh, and I attach it directly to the Lucky Craft and I'm good to go. But this is all my gear and how I set up uh, when I'm fishing with the Lucky Craft. And if you're just starting out surf fishing and you really wanna learn about how to read the beach, check out this video right here. I'll have many more videos on the Lucky Craft coming out. Thanks so much and as always, tight lines.